Hi students, today let's discuss on the topic called conception function. Now conception function means it's the use of goods and services by the household. In economics, the conception function describes a relationship between conception and disposable income. The concept is believed to have been introduced into macroeconomics by J.M. Keynes in the year 1936. Generally in economics, it is a functional relationship between two aggregates that is total conception and gross national income. It's nothing but it's a relationship between conception expenditure and income. Jane Keynes coordinated conception function. He expresses the level of consumer spending. If I had to give a formula for this, it could be C is equal to F of Y. C is equal to conception at zero level of income. F is a function. Y is the income. So it could be C is equal to function of Y. In mathematical terms, it's explained as C is equal to A plus BY. Now A depicts autonomous conception, conception when income is zero. B is marginal propensity to consume where the percentage of extra income is spent. And Y is disposable income, the income after deduction of taxes. Now just keep this rule in your mind. If income increases, the conception also increases, but not by as much as increase in the level of income. That means if your income increases, the conception must increase. So this relationship is based on Citrus Paribus assumption. As only income conception relationship is considered and all possible influence on conception are held constant. Now the table shows that the conception is an increasing function of income because conception expenditure increases with the increase in the level of income. Here it shows that when income is zero, people spend out of their past saving on the conception just because they must eat in order to live and this is called as autonomous conception which means even without the income the conception takes place now the people is earning 60 rupees and the conception increases 70 rupees so there's a difference between 60 and 70 which gives minus 10 so this date says that there is a dissaving and the people's income goes on increasing to 120 and the conception also reaches to 120 where we can see there is zero saving which means it is called to be break even point at this stage the income is equal to conception now the people is able to earn 180 and the conception is 170 that means 180 minus 170 which is equal to 10 that means the people are able to earn 10 rupees out of their conception now it, the income goes on increasing it reaches to 360 and the conception also reaches to 320 what is the saving the saving is 360 minus 320 that is 40 that means when the income increases, conception also increases, the saving also is holded along with the conception. Now if I had to plot a diagram, I would explain income is measured horizontally that is x axis and conception is measured vertically in y axis. The 45 degree line at all levels where income and conception are equal. It is a linear conception function based on the assumptions that the conception changes by the same amount as income does. 
Thus, the conception function measures not only the amount spent on conception but also the amount savings. This is because the propensity to save is merely the propensity not to consume. The 45 degree line may therefore be regarded as zero saving line and the shape and the positions of C curve indicates the division of income between conception and income. So it's very clear that the conception increases with the rise in the level of income. So the conception function it states the various amount of conception expenditure corresponding at a different level of income. So the Keynes hypothesized with marginal propensity to consume is less than more on household's income which goes on increasing. The more or its rate of saving is parallel. Students, if you like my video, please comment me and don't forget to subscribe me. Thank you.